It may seem like award-winning chef Marcus Samuelson was born to cook, but his life began in the turbulence and tragedy of Ethiopia, far from the kitchens of Europe and New York where he became a star. At 24, Samuelson was named executive chef of the highly regarded New York City restaurant Aquavit. Six years later, the attacks of September 11th made him rethink his life and ask himself what he was doing to help the city where he lived and worked. Marcus dreamed up a restaurant in Harlem called Red Rooster, a place that reflected the food, the culture, and the history of its community. Marcus and I got together at Ginny's Supper Club downstairs at Red Rooster for a Sunday sit-down. So, Marcus, tell me about the room we're in right now. Yeah. Ginny's calls to mind the Cotton Club and yeah. some of the old Harlem speakeasies. Red Rooster is where food comes first and music and arts second. Ginny's is where music is first. I didn't feel Red Rooster was complete without this room. I think a lot of people when they open a restaurant aren't thinking about community integration. Mm. They're thinking about how many covers they can yeah. get every night. There is that. But, but to you, that was really important. You took a survey of where this was, what the people around here might want, mm. um, where they could work in your restaurant. Why was that part of it important? My dad always said, if you're going to do something great, it's like taking a PhD. And it took him seven years to get his PhD. <laughs> so I moved here seven years before I opened the restaurant. And my PhD was to learn about the community that me and my wife and my son is living in right now. Over those seven years, Samuelson let the neighborhood tell him what his restaurant would look like. He absorbed Harlem's style, its art, and its tastes. The biggest hits on Red Rooster's menu include a seafood stew called Harlem Chowder and a whole deep fried chicken known as Yardbird. A charismatic star in the kitchen of his 20-some restaurants. I'm using the dough, but just to thicken my stock. Ooh. What? Boy, and a familiar celebrity face on popular TV cooking shows like Top Chef and Chop. Samuelson entered an elite culinary club in 2009 when President Obama asked him to be the chef at his administration's first state dinner. Is it nerve-wracking, though, to be back in the kitchen and be like, all right, this is going to the leader of the free world? I did get nervous and typically I called my mom, actually, and I was, we were walking outside. I was walking outside the Oval Office. I said, Mom, you know, I'm at the White House cooking the dinner for the president. And my mom said to me, listen, you're carrying your dad's name. Do not embarrass the Samuelson family. <laughs> Do not embarrass us. I was like, I didn't need this right now. She slapped you through yes. the phone. With all of his success, it's easy to forget how unlikely Samuelson's story is. Marcus was born in Ethiopia in 1971. My journey really starts at a hut that is about the size of two tables in my restaurant. When he was just two years old, he, his sister, and his mother contracted tuberculosis. Marcus's mother walked with her children some 75 miles to a hospital. She died, but she saved her children. It's something that will never really go away, but, you know, you also got to look at it like we got saved, she sacrificed. During Ethiopia's civil war, Marcus and his sister were separated from his family and later adopted by a Swedish couple named Samuelson. Well, as a young kid growing up, with African roots mm -hmm. in Scandinavia. Yeah. What was that experience like? It was our journey. So you never look at your journey as strange. I mean, when you take a family picture, it looks strange. <laughs> of course, we were the only sort of black family, not just on the block, not just in the village, actually in the city. My parents were white, my cousins were Korean, and my auntie's Jewish. So I've seen so many different worlds. And I know one thing. People want to feel like they're included. People want to eat well with their friends and family. And people want to sit around the table and just tell stories. Samuelson learned to cook at the side of his grandmother, Helga, whose meatballs are on the menu at Red Rooster. I always thought I would become a soccer star. So being humble and not achieving your dream, I always look at myself as a failed soccer player. <laughs> but there was a lot of things in cooking and soccer that was the same. You had to work a lot. You were with coach or a chef. The work ethic in soccer and the level of community and friends and family you have in soccer, I transported that into the kitchen pretty quickly. And I knew that I could cook because my grandmother uh, had gave us that as a gift, truly, or 
you know, forced us to cook. <laughs> As a teenager, Marcus set out to cook around the world on a cruise ship. Did you know from that age, this is what I'm doing with my life? The blessings of being a young black kid is that you have to be more focused. You have to be more precise. And my father was on me about this all the time. There's not a lot of room to be number two or number three. Cooking for me, it's not a profession that you pick, you know, the way you pick maybe to become a journalist or a doctor or a police officer. It's a calling. Samuelson held apprenticeships in the notoriously tough old school restaurants of Europe. Those European kitchens can be a little unforgiving, is yes. that fair to say? Yes. We all got fish thrown in our face. <laughs> See, well, I never connected to racism. You know, it was just a tough love. If you messed up, fish came back at you, hot in your face. There may was there even a plate and a pot and a pan. <laughs> but you know, it happened to all of us. It was not just to me. Equal opportunity, Equal fish opportunity. tossing. Good, exactly. Good. It was an apprenticeship at New York's Aquavit that brought Samuelson to America and changed his life. Still in his early 20s, Marcus was named executive chef there and became the youngest chef ever to get a three-star review from the New York Times. Hi, Chef Marcus. What's up, how are you, baby? You good? Marcus walks I mean. the streets of Harlem every day, keeping I mean. an eye on all the flavors. So do you draw inspiration when you come past these places? You know what it is, Willie? The people go in there, they know what to order without even looking at the menu. So I come here to, to sort of check myself. Oh, I don't want to be comparing with these guys. These, trust me. <laughs> They're crushing me. They're crushing me. You can tour the world with food just on this block alone. Absolutely. Amazing. Get gone from Puerto Rican, Italian, uh, Dominican, and of course Mexican. And uh, it's, it's delicious. And these are all immigrants telling their story about where they came from and being entrepreneurial with it, too. We're now at Taco Mix. I love it. So you've been open for 24 years. We can't get wow. more flavorful. Wow, there's so much going on in and here. And that makes me happy. Marcus hires from the community and works to train the next generation of chefs. So you're gonna show us how this is done? All right, we're gonna do it together. Excellent. And not just cook, life, life skills, truly. A little bourbon. Marcus, you still love being in the kitchen. There's nothing better than to just cook because you know, you see something transform, and you know you're making someone happy. If you don't get happy after eating this, I can't help you. I inspire one day to be like him. Dream big. That's all I can say. Dream big. And next for Marcus, he's bringing those Harlem flavors to London, where a Red Rooster will open next month. Marcus goes back to visit Ethiopia regularly. He reconnected with his biological father in 2000 and married his wife Maya there in 2009. To hear Marcus talk about how the attacks of September 11th changed his outlook on life and led him to open a restaurant in Harlem, check out our web extras at today.com slash Sunday. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.